Welcome to another feed scroll generator video for Autodesk Inventor. This time we're looking at how you can create a shaft with a dwell section for a bottle where the bottle effectively sits still for a certain period and then moves on uh, in order to maybe fill it or perform some operation on the bottle. Now this isn't something that we can do automatically with the feed scroll generator. We need to perform some manual operations with some surfacing in it using the standard inventor tools for this. So let me just show you exactly what the finished result can look like and then we'll work through step by step to actually achieve it. So um, with this shaft here, with this finished shaft, I can actually go and simulate it. So I'll hit the simulate button here and uh, we'll see the movement of the bottles that we've created by uh, creating this dwell shaft. Let's just move this around a bit. You see the bottles move along as per normal but when they hit this stopped section in the middle the bottles wait and then continue there okay and we can take a slice through this uh, um, through this assembly uh, using the normal inventor tools um, chop a half section view through here and we can analyze and check what's going on in this particular um, stopped area uh, we can check for interference here and so on and so forth but these bottles are being effectively pushed along and then stopping at a certain point and then continuing Okay, so that's the end goal. Um, as I said, we've got um, quite a few manual operations to get there. So this could take anywhere between say 10 to 20 minutes to do, depending on your level of familiarity. But uh, it's a pretty powerful um, end result here. So uh, let's have a crack at it. So here's a shaft that we're going to start off with for this example. And I've just created it using the normal generate uh, tools. It's, uh, it's just got a simple uh, increasing pitch as we go along. Um, but I want to maybe stop the bottle somewhere around here. Um, so, uh, so let's see how that's done. Um, first thing to say is probably create a shaft which has a reasonably high accuracy on the slider if I hit the generate button you probably want the accuracy quite high up here in order to create um, you know a good quality finished uh, shaft so I'm going to hit close there um, let's turn the visibility of this shaft on again and uh, and let's hit um, well let's start start work to create the dwell region so I'm going to create a new file first and into this new file I'm going to derive in that shaft we just looked at twice. I'm going to hit manage derive and I'm going to derive in that dwell part. Now I do want the solid body for the finished scroll and I do want a 3D sketch just to uh, just to orient myself really. So if I say OK there and then I'm going to derive it in again. Um, so I'm going to find derive um, same part in again and I probably don't need the 3D sketch this time so I'll turn that off. Okay so I've now got the part, the original part, um, derived in twice. So I'm going to select one of these solid bodies and change the color of it. Um, choose uh, which color I want here in order to just be able to distinguish between the two really. Um, So let's set this one to be a, a different color. Um, it's not immediately obvious that it has become a different color because they're on top of each other. But now I need to rotate the second shaft um, the amount that the, the, um, the bottle is going to be staying still for. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go to 3D model and uh, move bodies under here. I'll select the second solid body and I want to uh, rotate it. So I'm going to use this rotate about line and in this case I'm going to keep it simple. I want the shaft to or the bottle to stop for 180 degree rotation of the shaft. So for half of the full rotation of the shaft here. And in this case it doesn't matter which direction I rotate. This can be my rotate axis and I'm going to say OK. It looks like my color override there didn't work. So I'm just going to do uh, say tools and clear. Um, and clear and select all and hit OK 
and then perform the color override again. So I'm going to select this solid body and this time I should see the change I've made. Okay, so I've got the same shaft, the original shaft derived into this part twice and the second time it's rotated 180 degrees. So you need to have these two shafts overlapping each other like this. If you've got a gap here, then you won't, uh, it will, well, it won't be impossible, but it'd be more difficult to perform this uh, stop sort of dwell area of the shaft. So I've got quite a simple example here. Now I need to define where I want this shaft to, uh, where, the, where I want the bottle to actually stop. So I'm going to use my 3D model tab. I'm going to drag a plane along. Uh, and let's just say I want this, the shaft to stop at minus 280 um, millimeters. I'll say OK. And now I need to work towards actually um, revolving the shape that the, sh uh, that the bottle will chop out of the shaft in this area. So to do that I need a bit of construction geometry. I'm going to create a point that is on the intersection between this plane and this line and this 3D sketch. And when I do that I should be able to see down here here's that point being created on the intersection of that plane. Let's resize that plane so that we can actually see it. There we are, so the intersection of those two here. And now I'm going to sketch on this plane. Uh, excuse me, no, I'm going to draw an axis through uh, this plane and where it meets the origin point here. And to do that I can simply just sketch on this, this plane here. I'll, I'll say new sketch here. And now inside this sketch I'm going to slice the graphics using this shortcut down here or F7 uh, on your keyboard to slice the graphics so I can see what I'm doing. And I want to just draw a line from the origin, which is the center of the shaft, through this point here. Um, so I'll draw the line and then I need to actually project that point in. So I'll say project geometry and project in that point. And then snap uh, using a coincident constraint this line to this point here. Okay, I don't need to put a length on that, that's not particularly important. So I'm going to finish the sketch. And now I can actually get a plane uh, to, uh, to enable me to sketch the shape of the bottle at this position along the shaft. One way of doing this would be to start the plane tool, pick uh, the center point of that sketch, uh, which I should be able to pick here. by, um, by right-clicking Select Other. And then I should be able to find that point for the center there. Uh, and then pick this point here. And then pick maybe uh, the origin point of the part itself. Uh, let's start the plane tool again, excuse me, and pick those points again. There we are. So I've now got a plane that goes through the center of the part at the angle that I sketched at. Okay, at this angle here. Okay, and now I can sketch on this plane, which looks as if it's angled, but it's not really. Uh, I can sketch on this plane and draw the shape of the bottle. So uh, let's just check the, uh, the shape of the bottle itself. Um, in order to check that I should probably actually derive in the shape of the bottle. So I'm going to right click here and say edit derived part. Um, and I want to just bring in the shape of the bottle here. So I'll bring in the bottle sketch and say OK. There we are and let's just check the size of this. I'm going to right click and say measure and choose the size of this. So we have a 48 millimeter diameter bottle that I need to draw here. So on this angled plane that I created I'm going to uh, select it and right click and say new sketch and I want to draw a 48 millimeter diameter circle here. Uh, I should probably project in the center point there as well so I'll say project geometry and project that center point in and then circle it's a circular bottle. Of course, it doesn't have to be a circular bottle here, but um, this would be the simplest example. So 48 millimeter bottle there, and I'm going to say finish sketch. Okay, let's just turn off the display of that plane. We'll leave that one on for the moment. So I've just got a, a bottle sketch that runs, um, uh, is in the exact right position here 
for where the bottle is going to start uh, staying still or dwelling. Okay, so um, let's revolve that bottle shape now using the revolve tool. I'm going to uh, I'm going to revolve a, uh, a surface here uh, of this profile, and the axis can simply be the y axis of the part. And I'm going to do a full revolve of this here. Okay, so we've now got a surface that's been revolved there. Now we need to do some trimming on this, so uh, I'm going to um, extrude a, a, uh, the shape of the shaft to trim it. So on this plane here, I'm going to hit uh, New Sketch, and I'm simply going to draw the shape of the shaft itself um, which is 60 millimeters here as we can see okay and then I just want to extrude the, a surface that represents the shape of the shaft here let's turn off some of these other sketches to keep things a bit cleaner right click visibility on this one okay let's finish that sketch there and this shape here I want to extrude as a surface so let's drag that all the way along. Just got to go past where I'm dwelling the bottle here and I'm going to say OK. I'm going to use this surface, this surface here, to trim this surface. So let's use the trim tool and I'll say that my cutting tool is this surface and I want to remove this area here. So I'll say OK. And now what we've got, if I turn off the display of my solid bodies, just right click visibility and right click visibility again what, uh, let's turn off the display of that surface as well what we've got here is simply the shape of a revolved shape for the bottle as it is dwelling in this position okay let's turn on those solid bodies again now So the remainder of this example is simply performing the operation allowing the, uh, the cutaway here where the bottle is being fed along to merge into this dwell, uh, this dwell surface and then follow it round and then come out here uh, with the other solid body that I've created. So we just need to create an inter a smooth intersection between these two now. But first I need to do a bit of trimming on these solid bodies uh, of the original shaft. So this solid body from the start is only required up to this point here. So I'm going to trim it off here. Uh, to do that I'm going to create a point to define where I want to trim it. Center point of loop of edges and pick this edge here which gives me a point right there. Um, and I'm going to create a plane on this point and parallel to the origin plane over here. Okay, so I just want a point that defines the end of the dwell area here, uh, and I'm going to trim this start shaft here to that plane. Okay, so I'm going to use the split command and simply uh, do a trim solid using this as the tool, and this is the solid, and I want to remove this side. So I say apply and I've chopped off this shaft that side. Then I can turn that plane off by right click visibility and I'll turn the solid body off as well. Right click visibility and I want to do the same thing with the um, the uh, the end shaft here. So let's turn the visibility of that on and I need to repeat myself. So I'm going to do a point on the center point of loop of edges here. Uh, put it on the center of that loop of edges which will put the the point there and then I'm going to start the plane tool on this point and on the or from the origin plane parallel to the origin plane and now I can trim to this plane here so I'm going to use the split tool for that trim solid my split tool is this plane and I want to remove the material this side so that's what I want there let's say OK and let's turn off this plane Okay, so now if I make both of these shafts visible, I just need to 
perform the transition between these two shafts. So the bottle is going to come down here, then it's going to follow down through the middle, and then it's going to continue again here, going off in this direction. Okay, so let's do the uh, where the bottle enters this dwell section first, which is going to be using these surfaces here. So let's turn off the end shaft first because we don't need it and let's uh, perform these surfacing operations now. So I'm going to use the thicken tool first and I'm going to need to uh, extract as a surface with zero offset. Uh, I'm going to need to extract uh, this face, any faces which uh, intersect this dwell area here. So I'm going to pick that face and that face and this face here. Okay, and I'll extract all of those faces as new surfaces and then I'll turn off the original solid body. So I'm simply just working with these surfaces now and I need to perform, let's turn off that work plane and that work point as well just to keep things nice and clean. Uh, and this work point I'll turn off as well. I just need a clean uh, intersection between these two surfaces. Okay, so the way that we're going to do that is simply just use these surfaces to split each other and remove the surfaces we don't want here. It might be helpful for me to uh, change the display of these surfaces first so I can select them and perhaps choose a different colour. So I might uh, make them different colours to each other. So I'll pick that one, make it canary, and make this one uh, a different colour. It doesn't really matter what colour I choose. Um, let's make this one um, blue. And then I'll select them both and make them not translucent. Okay, so I can see how these surfaces intersect each other. Okay, so I need to remove this section here, really, um, and this section here. And then I should be able to transition between the two nicely. So let's use these surfaces to split each other. So I'm going to say split. My split tool is first this yellow surface and my faces I'm going to split are all these ones that intersect it. And I'll say uh, apply. Okay, there we are. So I've got these split surfaces. Now we have to do a bit of extra trimming because if you look at this big face here, you'll often get this scenario where we need half of this face and not the other half. So we want to remove this face here, but we actually need this face here. However, they're a single face at the moment. So this is probably the more complex uh, part of all this surface trimming that we have to do. But we need to split this big blue face along the middle and we'll have to repeat ourselves with this yellow face in a minute. And to do that, we're going to use this sketch line that we previously uh, drew in. So I'm going to draw a ruled surface here and I'm going to uh, say I want to create a ruled surface on a vector with this sketch line and my vector can simply be the um, y-axis here uh, and it doesn't really matter how far I go with that distance but you will just s simply need to make sure that you extend this surface beyond this uh, zone here uh, this zone will be larger if you've used a lower accuracy for the shaft. Um, so just got to go about that far. Let's say OK. And then I also need to extend it uh, using the extend tool to go the other side as well. Uh, now I can use this surface to split this blue face. So I'm going to use the split command. The split tool is this surface and the face is this blue face here. And I'll say OK to that. And now I've got a surface here which I want to keep and a surface here which I want to remove. So let's, um, before we actually remove these surfaces, let's use the blue body to, to split the surfaces of the yellow um, body here. So I'm going to use the split command again. Uh, the blue body is doing the splitting and the faces that I'm splitting are the, red, are the yellow faces here and I say OK. So now I've got split faces and I can keep and discard the ones that I don't want. Um, so uh, let's have a look. This bottle is going to be fed in like so here 
and go into the dwell zone. So I want to remove this surface here for sure. So I'll say delete that one so the bottle can be fed in without interruption. And then uh, as we're going down, we don't want this face here because this face is going to get in the way after that. So these two faces here, I can delete those. I don't want to heal. Uh, I just want to cut those surfaces out of there. And that is pretty much good for the lead in of the bottle here. Um, I can just check to see if there's any unwanted surfaces underneath here anywhere. These ones, for instance, I don't need these surfaces, so I'm going to select those and hit delete. Okay, so we've got uh, the lead in created successfully here. And now we need to repeat ourselves with the lead out section, which is going to be over here. Uh, so let's turn off the surface body for the lead in section. I might rename that here just so we can find it easy easily later on and I'm going to turn off the display of that right click visibility and we'll repeat ourselves with the lead out section um, where the bottle exits this dwell area so I'm going to turn on the solid body right click visibility here on that solid body and we need to extract the faces that are going to lead the bottle out from the dwell area so I'm going to uh, use the thicken tool just like before surface offset of zero and I will select um, face one two and three let's uh, say OK to that and let's turn off the solid body so that we can just see those faces again as before I'm going to uh, not make this surface translucent let's make this surface uh, blue like we did before And now we need to use these two surfaces to trim each other. So let's use the split tool as before. First we can use the yellow surface to split the um, these faces, the blue faces, and let's say apply to that. And now we can do the opposite. We can pick the blue surface and we can split the yellow surface with the blue surface and we say OK. And now we've done that, we should have divided surfaces all the way along, except we've got the same situation as we had before for the lead-in section, which is that this big surface here, we need half of it, and we don't want the other half, so we need to split it along the middle here. So uh, we'll use the, the same uh, surface that we did before, this one here, I just need to extend it a bit, so I'm going to hit extend, and extend that one up through the middle here because I am dwelling 180 degrees that will be okay to split the surface there so I'll use the split tool for this I say split use this as the tool and split just this big face here let's say okay to this and we've now got two split surfaces for the blue face here so I'm going to turn off the display of this uh, original ruled surface that I did and we've now got all these faces split so that we can keep the ones we want and remove the ones we don't want. Now which surfaces do we want to keep and which do we need to remove here? Well the bottles coming in if we turn it on our lead in surface the bottles coming in uh, from here as we rotate the shaft it's dwelling here but these surfaces are going to get in the way so I definitely need to delete that one uh, and this one here I can do this in in one operation if I want. Um, so there we go, the bottle's dwelling here um, and then it should be fed out by these surfaces here. Um, so this surface is getting in the way so I need to delete that one as well um, and then we should be able to feed the bottle out like so along here. Um, and there'll be some surfaces under here that we don't need as well but in this case you can see this big surface we need some of it and we don't need other bits of it so I may also need to do some trimming of this big surface here uh, to remove these faces underneath that I don't need so let's turn on our ruled surface again and just do a bit more um, splitting of the surface see we need to split this yellow surface here I need this bit but I don't want that bit underneath there so there's a bit of extra work here I'm going to hit split um, select that ruled surface to do the splitting and pick this yellow 
um, face to a split and I say OK and now I should have separate faces uh, for the areas I want to keep and remove so let's turn off that ruled surface and let's pick the faces under here that we don't actually want anymore so I can definitely get rid of this face here and this face here let's delete those ones um, and then it's sometimes not quite clear which faces you want to remove or keep uh, I think looking in at this angle might help a bit I want to remove that face there so I'm going to hit uh, delete face on that one let's have another look inside here and see if there's any other rogue faces need deleting sometimes the most helpful thing is to draw a section through the model so if I hit uh, view half section view I can then uh, drag a section through like so here and I'll be able to uh, hopefully just see and check that there's no duplication so I'm looking for faces inside other faces here that all looks okay for the moment yep it's all clean faces at the moment yep okay so I'm not seeing any rogue faces inside there that uh, that need uh, deleting okay so now all these surfaces are trimmed to each other I can start stitching them together and actually um, create a finished solid body out of them but before we do that we've got a few uh, redundant faces now on this on the original solid bodies you see I don't need these uh, three faces here on the original solid body because I've I've redone them effectively so if I turn off the display of my lead-in surface I can get rid of these faces simply just delete them off the original solid body so I'm going to say delete face and pick uh, these three faces here that one there and let's uh, I think we also need to pick this one here and I'll say OK to that and this is now converted to a surface body uh, if I turn on the display of this lead-in surface you'll see the uh, that being uh, joining up nicely there okay however for this lead-in body I don't need this section here because obviously this is getting in the way of my um, of my dwell area for the shaft so I should just be able to use the trim tool and use this yellow surface to trim away uh, this part of the uh, the white surface if that's not going to work there then what I would need to do is just use the one of the planes that I created earlier so I've got a work plane here which I can right click and hit visibility to turn on and another plane here which we'll use in a minute but I simply need to uh, say trim and use this plane to cut away this part of the original surfaces okay and you see now that looks a bit cleaner then I need to do the same with the uh, the end of the shaft here so I'll turn on the display of that solid body because it is a solid body at the moment but I need to see I've redone these faces here so I need to turn off the display of this lead out surface which I might just rename here as well lead out let's turn off the display of that and let's delete these faces that we don't actually need anymore on the original solid body so I'll select those three and I'll hit delete face and say OK so those have been cleared out now um, and we should we should just be able to turn on the display of that surface body now as well the lead out surface body and check the display of that that looks good uh, it's leading it out nicely but then of course we need to trim this unwanted area here so we'll do the same thing we did before trim to that work plane we created earlier and just remove this part okay so we're starting to see how this is going to come together now if I rotate this shaft we can check it this point there's no surfaces in the way it dwells a bit and then it moves on over here again 
So before we move on, I'd probably just check again that there's no rogue surfaces hidden inside there with going to view, half section view, and click on a face and just double check that there's no doubling up of any surfaces anywhere. Okay, so that all looks clean. Yep, I'm happy with that. That looks fine. Um, so uh, let's let's uh, cancel that. And the final surface that we need to create in order to be able to fully enclose this volume is this sliver here, which needs replacing. So uh, in order to do that, though, I think I first need to stitch these surfaces um, together. Um, so that would be the next operation now. And you've got to be uh, let's just save this this part file. You've got to be a little bit careful about how you stitch these surfaces together to make sure you don't double up um, surfaces on top of each other. So uh, I'm going to go to 3D model. Let's uh, explain this. So I'm going to um, start from one side and work my way across. So I'll say stitch and I want to stitch this um, end portion here with the uh, the lead out there. You can do this all in one operation but that may often not be successful. Now let's let's try it now. Uh, it might not work depending on the complexity of the shaft but if I pick all of those surface bodies and say uh, apply sometimes it won't be able to to handle that. In this case it looks like it has been successful. If not I'd need to go through these surfaces one at a time stitching them from uh, front to back or, or similar. But in this case I've now got a surface body that represents the whole of this shaft which is, uh, excuse me, that's that's off here, the whole of this shaft which is this surface here. The only uh, gap and thing that needs filling, if I uh, make this surface untranslucent here, is this gap here. But now because it's all one surface I can simply fill this um, and I can fill it using the that cylindrical surface that I created before. So you see I've got a cylindrical surface here, which, uh, which I used for an early operation. If not, you can simply extrude another surface cylinder here to use. Um, and I just want this portion of this cylindrical surface remaining. So to trim it and just keep that part of it, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to create a ruled surface for the trimming. Um, and I'm going to leave it on the normal setting and pick this loop of edges here. And that gives me a slightly strange looking surface there. You can see um, I don't need it quite so big, just a small surface here in order to actually trim away this cylindrical surface body. So I'll say OK to that. And there's my trimming surface, which I can then use to uh, use the uh, the trim tool and pick this surface body for the trimming and once inventors uh, calculated that I'm going to remove the rest of this cylindrical surface body here and say OK and now what we have if I turn off the display of that ruled surface is a very small little surface here which will be the which will close off that gap. Let's just not make that translucent, and you see we've got that finish cap surface there. And now this uh, surface body, or these two surface bodies, this one and this one, should fully enclose a volume, and we should be able to sculpt to create a solid body out of them. So let's use the sculpt tool and pick from the browser those two surfaces and we should get a preview and we should be able to hit OK and create a solid. If you don't get a preview here or if inventors struggling to calculate a solid here what I'd recommend is you hit the view button and you uh, drag a section through the model you've probably forgotten to delete a face in there you've got doubled up faces or some rogue faces inside and it's uh, preventing inventor from calculating this closed volume here. But let's say OK 
and we've now created a single solid body. Let's just make all of the faces of this part the same color for uh, visual purposes. I'm going to hit uh, Tools Adjust here. I'm going to select all of these faces and just specify a new color that I want for this shaft. OK, uh, and say OK. And with that done, I'm going to save this part. I might need to um, create a new view representation to actually be able to view that. So uh, I will unlock this view representation. This is not important. This is just for uh, the color override that I just created. And I'll save this part. OK, so let's have a look manually at how this is working. You can see a bottle being moved along here as I manually rotate it. Um, and then it enters this dwell section here and then the bottle will move out the other side. So this all looks pretty good. Um, in order to actually create a simulation of this, there's a few steps that we have to follow in order to do this. So I'll show you this now. Uh, I'm going to copy this uh, part here. I'm going to right click and say copy. I'm going to create a new uh, assembly file and paste this into the assembly file. Right click paste and then I'm going to find the original shaft which uh, in this case is called uh, dwell trial and I'm going to right click and open the base component there and I also want to place this component into the uh, assembly as well. So let's copy this one here and let's paste this into the new assembly that I've created. So right click paste and now I should have both of those parts in here. Uh, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need them both on zero zero. So if I pick both of these, um, hit my drop down here and ground and root them, uh, I'll ground and root both of those at the origin. OK, so you can see these parts match until you get to about here where we've done our dwell editing. But the goal with putting both of these into an assembly is I need to copy my um, finished part, uh, which is, is called part 12 here, um, back into the original part, which is called dwell trial, because this original part has all the, all the uh, calculations and parameters in there to actually perform the simulation. So I'm going to edit dwell trial here. I'll have to close it if, uh, so that was double clicking on it in the assembly, but I had to close the separate window. Now if I double click on it again, I'm editing dwell trial, the original part file with all these sketches in it. I'm editing that in context of the assembly and I want to copy in the solid body uh, that represents the, the dwell shaft that I created from part 12. So I do this by in the modify tab saying copy object here. So I'm going to copy um, this solid body in from that I just spent all that time creating. I pick the solid body. I want it bought in as a solid and I can just say OK. And you see here it will create a new solid body in this part. Uh, so let's just open up this dwell trial on its own now. Let's say open. We've copied in a new base solid here. And in order for this simulation to work, we need to rename this solid to be this name, which was the previously created shaft. So I'm going to click twice on here, copy this name, um, and then rename this. I'm going to call this delete. Um, and I'm going to rename this copied one. We're replacing that solid body effectively. Uh, let's actually delete that solid body there. We don't need it anymore. So we've replaced the solid body with the new copied one. The other thing that we haven't done is sorted out this sketch, which defines the path. But that is something we can do as well. Uh, oh, excuse me, I'm going to hit undo because I actually want need to rename this solid body here as well. So I'm going to copy the name of this finished scroll here. Let's copy that as well. That's an important step I forgot. I'm going to rename it and replace the name of that solid body with the new one. Uh, so let's, um, let's now delete the original feature and we've replaced the solid body in there. So I'm going to save this part. But the next thing, if we want to do an animation of this, is we have to make sure our coil calc sketch actually reflects the dwell in it. So this is the line that defines um, how the bottle is going to move along the shaft. Um, we need to edit this sketch. 
So let's go and just check where this dwell period actually is. If I go back to my part 12, remember right at the start of this exercise, I created a work plane uh, to define where I wanted this dwell to go. And it was 280 millimeters along the part. So I'm going to, I need to use that information inside my original part here. And I need to create a, a, um, a, a modification to this coil calc sketch. So let's edit that sketch. Let's just zoom out and have a look in. So don't be too off put by uh, this information in this sketch here. This is the distance along the shaft and 280 millimeters along this shaft. I need to create a line that represents my dwell in here. So I'm going to just simply draw a line here for now. That line's 280 millimeters long, so I can dimension it and say that's dimension to there. And I'll, I'll enter in 280 here. And now for the length of this line, this is how long the bottle is dwelling for. So in this case, we're dwelling for 180 degrees of shaft rotation, aren't we? So um, if I know the diameter of my shaft is 60 millimeters, which I can find from the parameters here, I've got a parameter in here called OD which is 60 millimeters, then what I can do is I can um, uh, use the calculator on my computer perhaps to say 60 times pi, 3.1415 is close enough, um, equals, that would be a full rotation, but then if I divide that by two, this is how long that line should be for 180 degrees. So 94.245, uh, so let's set that 94.245 there and I just now need to replace this line the old path with the new path which dwells here and then continues off up here as well so um, I'm going to draw myself a new line in here um, up here for now uh, make that parallel so I'm going to use a parallel constraint between this line and this line here um, and then I'm simply actually now going to lock it. So I'm going to pick this line and hit lock. We're not dealing with a parametric part anymore. We're, um, we're actually, um, we're just going to lock it because it's fixed geometry now. Um, it didn't seem to let me lock it there. So I'm going to delete this original line, select and delete both of that line there. And I need to replace this with a new line. So this is my new path going up to here and then dwelling and then up here again. So I'm going to lock this line now um, and I just need it to extend slightly beyond the length of the shaft here and I use a parameter for that as well. And let's just delete this extra line in here which we, we don't need um, anymore and dimension from the top of this dotted line to there. And that offset should be in my, if I say list parameters here, um, uh, excuse me, that should be bottle rot lead out overhang. So if you can find that in the list, bottle rot lead out overhang, and I'll say okay to that. It's only a small value at the moment, but uh, that's, that's what we need there. Okay, and with that set, um, it says three dimensions needed, but we can uh, we can just finish this sketch. It's all fixed geometry for now. Let's hit finish sketch, um, and let's hit simulate uh, in order to uh, get this sketch to update. So you should see if you watch closely, this um, sketch showing the root of the bottle should update as we hit uh, simulate here. So let's try that. We have to save the part file first. It's computing the root, but if you watch closely there, you did see that the the root was actually updating. Um, and now we've got a simulation here and we can simply uh, drag our slider here. Here's the bottles moving along. There's the bottle dwelling uh, and the next one dwelling as well. And as I said before in the previous example, we're, we're perfectly uh, capable of um, checking the uh, interference at, you know, at a critical point like this point, for instance, uh, we can easily run a 3D interference here, which I won't do now, or we can drag a section through and just check the interference. So I'm going to do a half section view through here uh, at the point where the bottle is actually interacting with the shaft. 
which is about here you can see this uh, this is the point where it actually interacts and then I can um, check check the interference so the bottles being fed along here pushed along by the shaft um, and then it hits the other side there so let's let's drag this down a little bit yeah, this is the point of uh, interaction here between the two isn't it so it drags it along here and then pushes it off the other side uh, this actually being pushed here by uh, this surface here down the bottom by the looks of it it's being really pushed by that surface um, but you can have a play around with that uh, run your interference checks here and that is uh, how we create a, uh, a dwell shaft using the feed scroll generator hope you enjoy this let me know if you have any issues recreating this on your own designs have a nice day